Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Well, good morning, everyone. It is bright and early on my last day in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I got a lead yesterday, and I was chatting with a person uh, at a side of a road who was basically selling off some wares, and he said, well, he's going to be moving soon, and he had a bunch of antiques that he wanted to sell. I wanted to come by this morning. I can come have a look. So I uh, made a deal with him um, to come and meet this morning at 8.30 in the morning. The kids are going to be sleeping. I'm headed to the highway, and we're going to see if we can find some treasures. I have to check out of the hotel here at some point this morning. It's been a nice, nice hotel, nice experience. It's funny, the hotel, <laughs> when you check in, you ever notice when you check in at like any hotel, not just this one, anyone, when you go to check in, they always have that questioning sort of look that they're like, hmm, we don't see you here. And then they find you and they're like, oh, we're so happy to see you. But it's that, that first little bit where that's like, are you robbing us? You shouldn't be here. <laughs> it's it's the, always the same, no matter what hotel you go to, it's like utter surprise and shock that you're standing in front of them and then they're happy to see you once they know that your name's on the list. Anyway. We're gonna go on this adventure, see what we find, and um, and hopefully I'll be able to make everything back in time before our flight. I have basically three hours to do all this, and I'm a little nervous that uh, I'm gonna run out of time this morning and not get it all done. Well, I'm here in the town of Blockhouse, Nova Scotia, which is only, uh, I'd say, probably about 10 minutes or so from Oak Island. It's only hope I can find some more treasure than what they've been finding underground, above ground. Um, I'm supposed to meet this guy in the parking lot here. This is where I met him yesterday on this ground. They were doing a little, uh, what they call a boot sale, or um, a sale where you pull up and you sell stuff out of the trunk of your car or truck. And he had a whole bunch of neat things. Told me he's got a storage unit full. I'm gonna go over and check it out this morning. It's a beautiful sunny day. Right now, my wife and kids are still sleeping back at the hotel and I've already got an adventure under my belt here, or well, about to anyway. Uh, so now it's just a waiting game. Hopefully he'll be here soon and then we'll go over to the storage unit. Okay, he's here. I'm pretty sure that's him and I'm following him now into the unknown. I'm really hoping that I'm going the right direction <laughs> and following the right car. Somebody could have just randomly pulled up and waved at me and then now I'm following them. <laughs> I guess we'll find out when they, if they start like driving frantically and trying to lose the tail, I'll know that I followed the wrong car. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing this is the right place. I see storage units, which could mean treasure. Gar. So was it all worth my time? Well, I got some really neat tobacco tins. Oddly, this one's made in Quebec, but it's the Chicago, Chicago Cubs baseball team. It's a chewing tobacco. Um, there's lots of neat, interesting old tins in here. But what I was most excited about was some toys. I'm gonna have to pack this up pretty quick. The kids are gonna be coming out. I have to pack tins inside of tins inside of cans. That's an 1800s pickle jar. You don't see those too often with the label intact. So I'm gonna get busy packing all this stuff up and uh, when I get down to the toys that I want, I'll show you guys what I was really excited about. There's one minor problem. I didn't plan ahead for the stuff that I bought, so I've had to come to a value village to try and find some luggage, something cheap that I can bring on the airplane with my new treasures that I found. And was it all worth it? Well, I'll show you guys in a second what I bought, but first I'm scrambling because our plane leaves in about an hour and a half. I haven't picked up the wife and kids yet and uh, still have to try and find a bag or something to put the treasures in. Ah, I think I see a couple here. Now let's just hope the price is okay. I can find a fairly big one for a good deal. 20 bucks. Oh, that one's $10. Be easy to spot that coming around the carousel. All right, well, I had to wait until we got home because I barely got on the airplane in time, uh, but I did get some really cool stuff and uh, Melissa helped me lug everything back in. <laughs> And we're just getting settled here after what was a really fun trip in uh, Nova Scotia and PEI. But let me show you what I found in the storage unit. So after what was two hours spent searching inside of the storage building, I got some really interesting tobacco tins, like this repeater fine cut tin with a little Mountie on there riding the horse. There's the Ronico, I don't know if I said that right, but the guy fishing with his little dog in his lap, smoking a pipe, having a great old time. 
There's the Packers Tar Soap. Um, nothing sounds better than shampooing with tar. Um, not sure I'd want to use that. I'm sure it was fine. <laughs> but cool tin. Old Chum with a little baseball hat on there. Morse's Tees. Pick Two Twist. Uh, it was a chewing tobacco. The Oceanic Cut Plug. Kind of neat because it's got the sandwich ship on there. Old Macintosh Toffee Tin. Very Art Nouveau looking sort of circus scene happening there. Old Virginia, and you can see it's got the baseball hat again. We've got the Simon Eyes tin. It still has polish inside of it. Um, might need to, I think that this tin would clean up quite a bit. That just looks like it's um, surface dirt. So I might give that a bit of a polish. If only that polish still worked in there, I could use it to clean itself, but alas, it sounds like it's hearted. But nice little picture of the guy waxing his car on there. Need something for your kidneys? Why not try gin pills? Because <laughs> nothing makes your kidneys better than more gin. Um, yeah, it's funny they don't make that anymore. Duke's a hazard case. Uh, we got the Tanglefoot Fly Spray. The Watkins Baking Powder Tin. Nice Royal Twist. That's a um, Prince Edward Island Tobacco Tin. World Navy. And then I got a, quite a, a large variety of toy cars. Now, some of these are Matchbox. Nice little Lesney or Husky Matchbox cars. And some are a little bit better shaped than others. This is a Red Line. Sadly, the red lines have worn off. This would normally have a little red stripe on the tires. That would have been a decent color. Pinks are generally a little bit harder to come across. That one's got quite a bit of modeling or discoloration in the paint, and the black is completely worn off. That roof would have been completely black. That's kind of far gone, but that said, it's still an original piece. Little police car there, it's kind of cool. Looks like a, maybe a 59 Chev which these had the bat wing on them. The real cars, if you got going fast enough, it would actually lift the back end up like, uh, it would get lift like wings on the back. They probably didn't make the best police car. You'd be pursuing somebody and then the back end would start lifting and fluttering all around. Um, this was kind of neat here. This is a Corgi toy. And I'm always, I'm probably more of a fan of Corgi toys than I am of Dinky toys. It's got the little people in there. The doors open and close, the hood opens, the trunk opens. And when I opened up the trunk, I found it still had the tiny little golf bag that was meant to go in the back there. So these guys, I guess, are going golfing. And uh, they, that fits perfectly inside of the trunk. I'll put that in later on. This was a nice find, the Monkey Mobile. Um, in that condition, which is really nice, that's probably close to a $100 car. Oh, so that was nice to find in with this. Nice little Jaguar. And that is a Husky model, very similar to the Lesney. Uh, the Matchbox ones they made at the time. They're almost identical, side by side. And, you know, some Husky uh, trucks and haulers. Uh, some old Hot Wheels, like this um, enamel painted uh, Flying Colors van. It's not a red line, but it's right around 1975 or 6 when they got away from doing the red line tires on them. A dinky toy bus. You can see the difference. I mean, this is an earlier dinky toy, but there's nothing, no interior on the inside or anything. They do have their charm though. And uh, some of the early dinky toys can be quite valuable. This piece, probably in that shape, is still worth, you know, 40 to $60 Canadian somewhere in there. But it's cool. I really quite like the ambulance and nice feature on the ambulance. <laughs> I have to take this out to show you guys is that they even thought to put a little guy in a stretcher in there. How cool is that? And I am a little bit partial to old ambulances since we own and drive one. At the Chicago Cubs chewing tobacco tins, I got a couple of those. Nice old Irving road map, probably from the 1920s. There was also some Planet of the Apes figures. Remember these from the 1970s? Uh, Evil Knievel, there he is there. And he's uh, ready to go on his motorcycle. Oftentimes you'll find the bike with no evil, or you'll find evil with no bike. Well, I found evil can evil with no bike. Uh, a couple of really matchbook covers were mixed in there too. White Rose Station. And uh, these, and that one, Caterpillar, probably worth about $20 each. So those were decent finds. Little uh, slot car of a Cadillac. That's an ideal one. Uh, it's a brand name. It's battery operated slot car. So not the type that you would control with a 
controller, but it's still pretty neat. But this is what I was most excited to find. I saw the Redline Rally case when I felt it had weight to it. I was hoping what you'd find would be uh, Redline Hot Wheels inside, and I open it up. Sure enough, packed full of Redline Hot Wheels is exactly what you want to find. But there's a few in here that are a little bit better than your normal ones. Um, and I'm going to have, this is as found. This is, you know, basically uh, pick fresh. I wouldn't normally pack them in like that, but that's how the kid had them stored back in the 60s or early 70s. And that's how they stayed. Uh, old 442 police car um, with the uh, decals or decals, some might say, intact on the sides. That's a nice piece. Um, the little uh, ambulance van there that's an unusual one it's one of the last of the red lines you get the enamel ones are the uh the later releases this little uh brinks sort of truck i think it's called funny money is a funny car like a drag racer but it's got the psychedelic sort of print on there it's in the the purple finish and i believe this guy's worth like 50 or 60 dollars in fact there's quite a few in here uh like the hong kong release uh what is this called the jackrabbit i think yeah the jackrabbit Really good shape and has the alternate blue windscreen. Uh, people have these online right now asking about $100 for them, whether they'll get it or not. And that's Canadian prices. That's probably about 75 or 80 US. But the best one in here by far was this guy here. This is the pink, sort of the salmon pink metallic red line cord. Um, it's in really, really good shape. There's hardly any flaws or any, any issues with this whatsoever. The color is nice and bright. The bottom's in great shape. Um, this little car here, surprisingly, this one little car, which I didn't even know was in there when I bought this stuff, um, could be worth around six to $700 <laughs> because the condition is so fantastic and it's an oddball sort of car, an oddball color. Um, it's about as good of a find as you can get, um, other than, you know, like some of the, you know, crazy expensive red lines, but for an, a regular red line, that's a good, good find. So with the red line cars, that was probably the best batch there. Uh, all the various tins and cases and matchbox toys. Um, the value is probably going to be somewhere around, uh, $2,000 to $2,500. So there'd be some good profit. I'll probably be able to double up. Um, from what I spent on this stuff and I'm really happy because the condition on some of this I went through and made sure to pick out the ones that were in the best kind of shape and Overall really really happy with the finds that I got out of that storage unit today So it was worthwhile us rushing and getting back home also found a stack of hundred year old Magazines actually more than a hundred years old these date from 1900 To around 1907 as you can see from the date see that one's 1900 so that is called the Puritan you can see the Art Nouveau sort of look to it there. And then we've got um, some other really beautiful, I mean, look at the artwork on these covers. Harper's Bazaar. I mean, that's got to be one of the oldest Cosmopolitans I've ever seen. Um, my, how it's changed. They don't give relationship advice on the cover. They give you a nice little picture to look at. And then you open it up and what are they advertising? Oh, look, they're advertising Packer's Tar Soap. Looks like it was a popular thing. It's from 1907. 1907 Cosmopolitan. And I noticed that a lot of these, other than the ads, look at that 1908 Franklin ad in there. Um, there's a lot of uh, fashion advice too. Stories from authors. Oh, really nifty sort of thing to look at. Well, even though I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't make the airplane um, and get the family picked up on time. I did manage to go out there, find this stuff, do a little picking before our flight. And uh, that one uh, cord, that one Hot Wheel car is probably gonna help pay for um, the rental car from our entire vacation, or, you know, we'll put it back towards the trip we just took. So thanks very much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little uh, adventure. I'm really happy and pleased to find all these little red line Hot Wheels. That was a good score. So uh, check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca. Um, you can check us out on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated or on Instagram at Curi Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.